Vicky Simon, it's a pleasure to welcome you back to the Australian Ballet. I know you've started working for the company since 1968, which Correct. is amazing. You've um, really made your balancing mark on the company. And I'm curious with, for you, what is it about balancing? I know it's a very broad Whoa. question, but f for you personally, not for audiences, not for dancers, when you were young and impressionable, what was it about his, his genius um, or his spark that attracted you? My mother took me to a performance when I was like seven years old, and I believe it was the New York City Ballet, or actually it might have even been Ballet Society. Mm. And she took me and I said, I want to be a ballerina, like lots of other little girls. And she found, I don't know, there was something about the ballet, music, mm -hmm. the combination. Mm -hmm. It was just something I saw and I just felt I want to do that. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. It's, it's, I just fell in love with Balanchine. And I had my first encounter with him uh -huh. when my mother took me up to the School of American Ballet and I was really only seven and three quarters and you were supposed to, at that time, had to be eight years old. Mm -hmm. And she took me up, and the woman at the desk said, well, I don't know. And then this gentleman came out, and I stood up, and he looked at me, and he said, it's all right. And that was Mr. B. That's amazing. So, and so the rest is history. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so what was it about, really, the approach to technique? Because a lot of people speak about the Balanchine technique. Right. And when you see the ballets as a viewer visually i mean they're stunning they have a freshness they have a moodiness sometimes they have plots they don't have plots right but what is it about the balancing technique that i think um well that you think is so important that then informs the ballets i think it's a combination of the musicality mm -hmm. and the energy mm -hmm. those two realms make the Balanchine technique. Now there's also, I feel, different techniques for different ballets. Really? Yes. Wow. I mean, stuff that's in Four Temperaments, I can't really give some of that stuff in class because it's, it's so contemporary yeah. feeling. It's, it's based on classical ballet, but it's gone beyond it. Yeah, yeah. And stretched it and extended it. Yeah. But, uh, so it's hard, like I, I, when I teach class, I try to sometimes incorporate stuff from the ballets that I'm working on. Yeah. And for temperaments, it's really hard, but it's the energy that I can talk about yeah. that they need. So then we take for temperaments, which the company is dancing in your setting. Um, an amazing, what they would call black and white ballet because of the costumes. I know you can't teach for temperaments in class, but how does, classwork then inform four temperaments because you see the kind of modernity as you said the starkness the contemporary style of movement but do you find the balance between classical technique and you know the modernity of four temperaments or how do you approach well, something it, as specific as four t's you know it almost starts with with your basic tendus that we start class with mm the energy of the going out and the coming back, yeah. that translates into the ballets. So true. It's the way that foot moves. It's just such a that simple basic thing that you start out when you're this high. Yeah. That same tendu is in the ballets. Can translate. It's, it's in the... It's and it's about the energy. Yes, the way the foot goes out. Yeah. And the way it comes back into fifth position. Yeah. That the basic thing, it's, it's, it translates into the ballet. Yeah. It's amazing how something so simple is so formative. Yeah. Um, and that's, the, I think, the beauty of, of balancing work is you look at something like Fortis, and s sometimes the movement is so simplistic. But genius in its simplicity and so complex. Right. And also how it relates to the music. Yeah, so I that was my next, you're jumping the gun here. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, that was my next question. So 
the Hindemith score is haunting, is, is um, telling. It, it really tells a story, in my opinion. It, it, it shows mood, it shows color. Uh, what, in your opinion, is the relationship between Balanchine's choreography and Hindemith's music? They become one. <laughs> they really do, don't they? Yes, the music and the choreography just match each other so perfectly. Mm. And Balanchine was a musician besides being, you know, the great choreographer because he played the piano. And many times in rehearsals, he would sit down and play a little bit. Mm -hmm. And he also conducted some performances. Do you know that? I didn't know that actually. Yeah, he conducted. A I few knew Nureyev conducted a bit, but I didn't know Balanchine That's right. did. Balanchine did too. Wow. Yep. Wow. I mean, you can see, I was speaking um, about this with William Forsyth's work because he was a musician as well. Uh -huh. You can really draw the parallel of choreographers who know music really, really well. I think and I, so. I think that's what Balanchine um, became so well known for is that his, as you said, his ballets became so musical. They became um, really the dancers almost um, sp spoke the music through their bodies. Exactly, and I think it's an extension of the music. I've gone to performances, say, of Serenade in an orchestra, and to me it's missing something mm -hmm. <laughs> because it, that the visualization of the music yeah. is so, uh, to me has gotten, that makes the ballets. Yeah. It's, it's the visualization of the music, Yeah. I think. Yeah, so then, what makes work, this might be a hard question to answer, okay. but what makes work timeless? Because you look at something like Four Temperaments, you look at Agon, you look at Serenade. I mean, I could go on and on about the Balanchine repertoire, but what makes a ballet like Four Temperaments timeless? I'm obviously saying that it is timeless, and I think right. you'd agree with me, but why does it look still so modern and so fresh and therefore timeless? I think that probably the dancers have realized the music also. Mm. And the, the, each generation of dancers takes what the past generation did and sort of adds to it a little bit yeah. and makes it their own. Yeah. The same as with any orchestral piece. Why does Beethoven's symphony still sound so amazing now? Mm. Uh, I think it's that respect for it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that continues that continues uh, the tradition. Yeah, I, I think what's so interesting um, in terms of relevance. I mean, there's a big question in ballet, right? Is ballet still relevant? Is opera I hope still so. relevant? <laughs> Well, I don't hope so. I know that it is, so I assure <laughs> yes. you that it is. But, uh, you know, I think it's so true that every generation of new dancers and time, time ticks, a new mm -hmm. generation comes, certain works uh, stand the test of time because the dancers partially um, think it's still relevant, and so they attack it in a certain way. Right. Um, and then it goes into how much the audience still appreciates it and wants to see it. So to have that equation, you know, the dancer's feeling its relevance. Mm -hmm. So the dancer's feeling its relevance of four temperaments. And then the audience still being convinced that it's relevant, I think it yeah. offers the sense of timelessness. And also I feel that the dancers now are better than the dancers were when Balanchine first started. It mm -hmm. took him a long time to develop the, the dancers that he really wanted. Mm -hmm. So uh, if I said a ballet like Four Temperaments, which was created in 1946, now I don't want it to look like it did in 1946. <laughs> because the dancers are better, they, yeah. you know, there's everything about it, but it's still the same choreography, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but it, you have to keep it fresh mm -hmm. and now. Yep, yes, absolutely. So that the audience can relate to it. Of course. You don't want it to look like a, uh, an old-fashioned museum piece, piece or something. Absolutely. Right. Um, so the curtain goes down, the famous push, uh, you know, with right. the cast. Uh, the curtain drops. What do you think 
the audience has experienced? What do you think the audience walks away from thinking? Well, joy comes to mind. <laughs> I think they've experienced a lot of emotions mm -hmm. with four temperaments. Agreed. There are very quiet moments. Yeah. And then all these dramatic moments. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot that goes on there. Romance in a way. So you have a lot of, well, there's four temperaments. So yeah. Yeah. plus variations on those mm -hmm. themes. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, and as I said before, it's the visualization of that music and bringing it to another height. Yeah. I've always felt that when the curtain goes down in four temperaments, it's like you, it's like a big, deep breath. Right. In my opinion. It's Those like last <sighs> moments in it are like, to me, like fireworks yeah. going off, yeah. explosions. Yeah. It's very exciting. It is. The end. It is. And then again, the marrying of the music. It's this like final period in the sentence. It's yeah, beautiful, it's beautiful visual as well. I think such an iconic visual ending of a balancing right. work. I mean, you can without fireworks happening, it looks like fireworks. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's a great way to end a work. I can't wait to see it on stage. Thanks for chatting. You're very welcome. <laughs>